In this lesson, we'll conclude a review of PSAT Math Test 2, Section 4, Calculator Permitted, questions 28 through 31, the final four grid ends. And there are four grid ends in both sections, and we're going to do all four in this video. All right, let's take a look at 28. A grocer carries two types of frozen meals that have the fat and carbohydrate content shown in the table above. John wants to purchase a combination of the two types of meals with no more than 350 grams of fat and no more than 2,975 grams of carbohydrates. If John purchases 10 Szechuan chicken meals, what's the greatest number of stir fry meals that he can purchase so the combination will satisfy the requirements? And so we see this phrase, this is a common inequality phrase, no more. No more means it, it can't exceed that value, so that's less than or equal. And we have to make sure that he stays within these constraints. And we're told he initially purchases 10 Szechuan meals. And so the Szechuan, we can figure out how, so far, how much fat and carbohydrates he's used. So this is going to be 50 grams of fat, and this is going to be 350 grams of carbs. Okay. And so we've got these constraints. So let's start with the 350. That's the total amount. We've already used up 50, and so what's left is going to be 300, and we're going to take that 300 and divide by 4. All right, so 300 divided by 4, that means he could purchase exactly 75 stir fry, but we're not done because we have another constraint, and so if either constraint is, is violated, then we have to we have to use that value and so we don't know if it's 75 yet we're gonna check with carbs now we already had 350 carbs and the total is 2975 and so what's left 2975 minus the 350 this is how many grams of carbs that he can still buy so it's 2625 and so remember the stir fry has 40, so we're going to divide this by 40. Now, if this number is greater than 75, then the answer is 75 because we we use the one for the fat. But if this is is less, we'd have to use this value because either one it exceeds, we have to use that value. And so we're just going to take this value, 2625, and divide it by 40, and we get 65.625. And so that means this is the constraint. Now be careful, this is not a rounding question, 65.62. We want to see what's the greatest number of whole meals he can purchase to satisfy it. Now we can't go up to 66 because he would, he would surpass the constraint for carbs. So we always are going down. This is not a rounding question, it's just the greatest absolute number. Even if this were 65.97, it's still only 65. And so that's the answer here, 65. All right, question 29. If x, y is the solution to the system of equations above, what is one possible value of the product of x and y? And so we can just use substitution here. Actually, we're, we're just going to set both equations equal because they're both equal to y. And so we have x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals x minus 1, right? Because they're both equal to y. And so we just solve this. We're going to bring an x over. We're going to subtract. So we get minus 5x and we add 1 we got plus 4 equals 0 so we want to find the solutions we have to factor this so two factors of 4 to get negative 5 so obviously it has to be minus 4 and minus 1 and so the solutions are 4 this is just the per x and 1 and we want one possible value of the product of x and y and so let's take our 4 and we're just going to plug it in. I'm going to use the second equation because it's a little bit easier. If we plug in 4 for this, right, we get y equals 3. And that one answer for the product would be 12, 4 times 3. So 12, you could just stop there. If you wanted to put a 1 in here for the other solution, we'd have 0. And so that's going to be 1 times 0, and it's 0. And so 12 or 0, either one is correct. When you see that phrase, one possible value. All right, we're going to do the last two. And this is a paired question, number 37 and 38. The graph above shows the supply in millions of pounds of king crab harvested and sold 
from 2005 to 2011. The information for the year 2012 is not included in the graph. So different years, we've got pounds and millions on the Y, and 2012 is not given. So let's take a look at the first question. Question 30, in 2006, the price of King Cab was $8 a pound at the beginning of the year and dropped to $7 per pound toward the end of the year. If 60% of the King Crab supply was sold at the higher price per pound and the rest was sold at the lower price per pound, what was the total revenue generated in millions of dollars from the sale of King Crab in 2006? Now, note this y-axis is already in millions of pounds. And so for 2006, it is exactly 180, but it was split up because the price changed. So part of the price was at $8 a pound and seven. And we have to figure out what proportion and we're given the ratio or the percentage. So 60% of the 180 was sold at $8. And so we could just use our calculator. We're gonna take 60% of 180. So it's gonna be 0 0.6 times 180. This is the amount of pounds, 108, at $8. And the rest, you could just subtract, these have to add up 40% of 180 is going to be 72. And so we just multiply these both out and add them together. So 108 times eight, that is 864. That's the revenue from $8 a pound. And then 72 times seven, this is the revenue at $7 a pound, 504. And I'm just gonna add it to 864. And that is the answer, 1368, and this was 504. And this is what you would grid in. And we're gonna do the last question, number 31. In 2011, the price of king crab was $17 a pound. In 2012, X million pounds of king crab were sold at $16 a pound. If the total money generated from the sales each year was the same, what's X? And so we just have to set these equal. We have both variables in 2011. So 2011, when we look at the graph, is exactly 80, million pounds and this is in millions again so we know the revenue from 2011 is going to be 80 that's the millions of pounds times 17 all right so 80 times 17 and that's 1360 and so we know that this is 1360 is going to equal 2012 and we're not given the amount, but we're told that it's sold at 16. So we're just gonna make an equation. It's gonna be 16 X, and the X is gonna be the pounds and millions. And so we just divide each side by 16, and that will give us the answer, 85. And that's it.